Hello, good, uh, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you everyone for uh, struggling through transport challenges, etc. Um, and joining us for this morning's panel discussion on how automation made us better hosts. I'm Ian, my name's Ian Hardwick. I'm the Business Development Director from Avivo. Um, and we have a stand over there, so come and say hi if you've not done already. Um, I'm delighted to be joined today by four of our customers who are experts in their field and know everything you want to know about automating your business. So to my left, I have Chris Graveling from the Grove and Cromer. Chris is a third generation of Gravelings to, to run the Grove and Cromer since 1936. And uh, it's basically a, a Georgian country house in the Norfolk countryside with a restaurant with two AA rosettes since 2013, um, five bedrooms recently added, and a luxury suite on the top floor. Next to Chris, we have Peter Gonda from Denby's Vineyard Hotel. Uh, Denby's is the largest vineyard in England, if uh, anyone's interested in, in a visit. Um, wow. And after 35 years in Beautiful. Polish and British hospitality, Peter is still enjoying uh, his, his, his time there taking care of, of all the guests. Next, we have Paul Munton from Snooze in Brighton in East Sussex, who created Snooze in uh, 2006, hoping to, to bring a, a new look to, to Brighton's holiday offering and steer, steer Snooze through uh, recent uh, issues. And at the end, Pratik from the King's Cross Hotels Group in London. And Pratik has 24 years of experience working in hospitality, uh, transforming hotels in the King's Cross area, which has been transforming over the, the last few years um, into a real hub and a must-see destination um, in the UK. So welcome, guys. Thanks for making it here and uh, struggling through. Um, so let's start off, what does automation mean? So everyone knows what we're, what we're talking about. What, what, does it, what does it mean to you, Chris? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, what does it mean? Well, I think it can mean anything, really, from uh, not having a washer up or having a dishwasher. You know, I mean, that goes back 30, 40 years. And we, so we, I think we all embrace it kind of automatically in the industry. And then up to today is more things like um, guest communication or... Uh, just automatic emails or uh, I suppose anything from bookings online where you don't even have to do anything in your hotel to uh, again it could well be the uh, the cutlery polisher so you don't have somebody standing there doing this so it's my opinion what about you guys uh, to me it's all about time and the popular notion is that time passes. And I can assure you from my viewpoint that I am 60 now, we pass and time doesn't go anywhere. The time has been here 13 billion years and it's not going anywhere. But we need time. We need time to please our guests. We need time to please owners of the business. And we need time to please ourselves in our life, you know, to have time for ourselves. So how do we buy time uh, through automation? We just remove all the formalities from interactions with guests so we can for example, the check-in process. We can do a lot of it before they arrive, and we can just have a nice conversation when they arrive. We don't have to interrogate the guest about the passport details or you know, credit card details or anything like that. It has, can be moved to a pre-arrival process. Same for uh, the checkout. A lot of things can be automated and moved outside of the actual interaction when we just could ask them how they felt and what the, what the uh, experience was instead of interrogating again and going through the bill. It can be automated. So I, I say automation for me is buying time. Buying time. Agree. For me, it's about implementing processes that uh, free up my time, make my life easier, make me more hands off um, so I don't get bogged down in the day to day uh, issues of the, of the place. Whether that involves parking information, check in, check out, asking them about reviews, breakfast. We, we've put in elements of automation in all of that, and it's definitely freed up our time. And uh, yeah, gives us, gives us more time to just talk to guests and you know, improve their experience without, like, it's a, it's a very good point about we, 
you don't want to in interrogate your guests. It's, uh, you know. In fact, I know automation's sort of at the heart of, of what yeah. you do. Yeah, I absolutely you. agree with all the guys. It is about time. Um, it's something which is very precious. How do you give your guests their time back? How do you give your staff their time back almost so they can do their jobs better, so they can enjoy their jobs? Staff retention issues, great. And then they can deliver superb customer, ex customer services and experiences. That's, that's the crux of it, is the time issue. And, and so what prompted you to go from the model that you did have with your previous <laughs> hotels to something that was yeah. as automated yeah, as you can yeah. make it? I mean, I came from a place where it was a 28, 28 years ago, a pen and paper in a book, right? And then from there, multiple brands, an Excel spreadsheet, about 16 extranets, <laughs> each with about eight rooms, no PMS, no channel manager. And I was doing it that way for a very long time. Um, I always wanted a PMS, but it was, it was the porting over period from, from going from that old system to a new system. You've got to pull the trigger at some point and it's just a constant moving target. So that combined with building a decent team and then we managed to port over to the Avivo system and I mean, it changed everything. It was, it was, it was the beginning of the beginning. I, I, I guess... When we, you know, we talk about robots for automation and yeah. all this, that, and the other, but kind of thinking back a little bit, and Chris, you were just talking about you know, machinery in the kitchen and stuff like that, but it's thinking back of how much time actually gets saved having all of that connectivity. I mean, uh, how, how much time do you, do you think you save having all of your rates, availability, images, descriptions and stuff put up is that something that you change regularly and so, so you know the more you change it the more time you save it you just employ one person less you know fewer, <laughs> fewer people on your payroll simple as that as cruel as it sounds but i want to reflect also on the revenue management uh, because it's not only channel management as such but for instance avivo gives you this pleasure of establishing a rule where whereas you have a few rooms to sell it can drop or raise the price you can sell the last room at the higher price. And it works in the background. You don't have to remember that. Because you set up the rule and you forget about it for, for eternity, really. So not, uh, automation doesn't give you only money, but it also gives, doesn't only give you time. It also gives you real money. Yeah, because I was, I was looking last night on your site because I've not stayed, but I have colleagues who have. And, and uh, it, it, I'm interested in English wine, so it's, it's like a, a good place to come. But there's a, a, a week in advance and it drops the prices, doesn't it? So you've, and that's an uh, automated... These promotions rule. also work in the background. So you set it up once and you, can only, you may change the time frame or you can apply different time frames or different uh, discounts, but it works automatically. Yeah, yeah. And, and Paul, do you have different prices on, on your site? Do you have one, one rate on your own site and then different on OTAs? We, yeah, we've got... Um, We've got either room only rates or, or we have like flexible rates and we have those for our own uh, book direct which comes straight through Evivo um, through our own website or we, we have separate rates for all our OTAs and um, the amount of uh, commission that they charge to us, uh, we automatically add that onto our rates. So basically we never lose out on the rates because all our rates are factored in to our Evivo management system. So, um, you know, if you, if you book on booking.com and they charge us 18%, you pay 18% more if you don't book direct with us. So, yeah. So, and you just Evivo set takes up. care of all that. So you just set that up once and that's Set that up once, uh, tweak it every season and, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and do, you, do you change your prices at all or do you have, uh, do you have that sort of level of, of yeah. price or do you just have a so, flat price? I used to do it all the time, constantly upping and downing the rate, <laughs> but it was so boring. You know, at the time I thought this is brilliant, this is amazing, but it takes you away from actually what it is you're supposed to be doing. It takes you away from the core principles of being a, being a hotelier, being in hospitality, you know, strictly just delivering good experience and customer services. And when you're so bogged down in the nitty gritty of 
yielding up rates and different room types, it becomes a whole different ball game. So, look, I, I've got different brands, so I hit different price points. And since COVID, we're lucky, you know, we've, we've weathered that storm and we've had the as promised bounce back in, in tourism and, and in booking. So yeah. it was almost like one price per room all year, go. And then you can stagger it up, you know, as you get your occupancy, but it wasn't a daily yield as it used to be. Um, but I think if you get your product right, uh, you, can, you can set your rate. Yeah. And yeah. you don't always have to yield it. It's d different schools of thought on that. I, I prefer on one of my brands, set the rate, that's the same price for you. And for that price, we can deliver the service, whether it's a Sunday or a Saturday. And you sort of work on a, a quite an all-inclusive kind of Yeah, I think it's the way forward. For us, it's the way forward. We love an all-inclusive. Once you're in, you don't have to pay for anything else. Just yeah. here's your yeah. room. Here's your, you can charge more. You get the leverage there. Yeah. Get everything there. And then you're confident you can deliver the, the customer service. Fine. If you're confident that you can do that. But yeah, um, an all-inclusive price. So when the customer comes in, he's not having to almost be fleeced. Pay for this, pay for this, pay for that. When I go somewhere, I don't really want to have to pay two quid, three quid, four quid for stuff. You know, it's all included. But I, I think, Chris, maybe you have a slightly different approach in sort of with upsells and, and extras. So do you set those up to, to automatically appear on bookings? Yeah, so, um, so talking about that, yeah, so our, our prices, we do it slightly differently with OTAs that we, um, if you're booking direct, you get breakfast included. If you book on an OTA, you don't. And we find that the uptake for breakfast is quite high. So we charge more than that uh, than the commission we would pay. So that works quite well because it normally pays for itself. And if we don't have a breakfast cost, well, we don't have a breakfast cost if no one pays it. Um, but yeah, with, with upgrades and things, we have different packages um, that people can just click on when they're buying the room. So um, we have something called a little surprise, which is flowers and chocolates in the room. And you can just add it to your, um, your uh, stay or a uh, you know, bottle of champagne. It goes up and up and up. Uh, so there's that. Um, we're also just about to uh, put in um, automation for breakfast slots. So our breakfast is time slots, like you'd book a time. Um, yeah, like you would in a dinner. Um, and we're, we're doing that, we're automating that. We use Res Diary for our um, restaurants and they're really good in terms of integration and uh, an automation. And so we can now send an email out with a confirmation, with a, a link to a hidden page where they can book the breakfast time. So literally, as you were saying earlier, when someone checks in, all they need to do is say, I'm here. We don't need any details from them. We've got them all. Um, and we ask if they want to be shown to the room or if they don't, because some people do, some people don't. Keys in the room. And some people say, well, I've been here before. I know where the room is. Right, great, we're here. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I, talking to, to you earlier, I think it, it, it was you saying about avoiding that slight awkwardness at reception that yeah. I think you can feel I went to stay in a hotel in Amsterdam recently and there was no one at reception and then you're like well should I ring the bell or yeah. should I wait or where are they and that kind of I think where people want where they know where they're going and, and they know what they're doing and you've given them the instructions yeah. then, then off they go I think Paul that's the sort of approach you have Really, isn't it? I mean, because you, you, you're not always on. We're not on always site. on site. We don't live on the premises, so we have like a self-checking facility that you can use for periods when we're not on site. Um, we fire off automated emails to our guests before they set off to uh, arrive at snooze, and it gives them instructions for self-checking. We also ring the guests before they due to arrive, gives them a nice little personal touch. We speak to them about parking, which is also another area of our um, sort of experience that we offer an automated response to but our front door has a little keypad on it and so it's very very simple if you're quite if you want to arrive whenever you like you don't want the issue of having to meet us having to come to our little reception and get your key and you can basically take a four digit code get into a snooze make your way to your room room keys on the bed for you very very simple works a treat yeah, and pretty foolproof. We've 
we've refined it over the years um, from having a key safe to now literally having a keypad on the door and it, 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 it's yeah. and, and very Patsy, successful. Is it contactless with your keyless? Yeah, so with you we've gone full. We've got the remote lock on the door connected to the Wi-Fi. So that's connected to another technology stack, guest talk. Yeah. So it all, it's, it's done seamlessly and automated. Um, day of booking, automated code sent out, pre-booking, letting you know you'll be receiving these. At booking, automated email saying this is how we operate. But we're in-house anyway, we're around if you need us. But here you go, here's your codes, here's your room number, here's your floor, here's the Wi-Fi, here's a hello, all done. Just check yeah. yourself in. Then our system tells us when you've checked in, i.e. when you've accessed the lock, then we can go and see you and say, hi, we're here. Yeah. If you need anything, we're here. Yeah. Uh, it's Very good. So I suppose in that way, you're kind of taking reception to the guest rather than the guest coming to the yeah, reception. Yeah, I, I, I always thought that the reception is, is a concept. It's not a, it's not a person or a place, it's a concept. And now with all the technologies, luckily that we do have today, we can implement those things seamlessly. Yeah. The guests love it, but also, as importantly, the staff love it. They're not dealing with, oh, is this key fit, and that key, that, all of that stuff. They're not just there to hand over keys. They're not just a teller behind a booth handing over keys. They're a customer service do you find that, Do you find that guests are sort of comfortable with that, or do they then come and find you just to make sure that there's a reception? 99% uh, of the people are super cool that they love it because they know they've got everything beforehand and they know what they're doing um, they've read everything yeah. even the older age group like it they've adapted to it and where's the market going travelers are coming you know they're it's second nature to them yeah. peter is that the same at, at denby's where i guess you have a sort of a more traditional yeah. market there will still be guests who find you and want to talk to you about their daughter or their grandchildren or anything like that and you you don't you don't throw the baby out with the, with the bath. But what I would like to say is that the old golden rule of hospitality is much more harder uh, to run a small hotel than a big hotel. And in a small hotel, sometimes you don't even have a reception hall or the reception is combined with a bar or anything like that. So you don't need the crowd there, you don't need queues. And we used to think that the queue is a long stretch you know, in, uh, of people. To me, after my sort of corporate hospitality experience, the queue is just one person waiting to be served. It is a queue already. This is why we don't, we don't need that. We don't need them to wait. This is why automation, uh, what automation provides, you know, that we can kill the queue instantly. There is no queue. And on the, uh, 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 on the key uh, to the room side, uh, we, have went, we went uh, even a step further because we sent the, key, the room key to the mobile phone of our guests. Yeah. So they arrive, they tap yeah. with the phone on a lock, and that's it. The, no, no instruction even required to that. I mean, the, the point is it, it enhances the customer service experience, not takes it away, yeah. because you're giving the time back to everybody, your staff and your guests. So you're not there reacting to when somebody's coming, doing the key. It's all done in advance. Yeah. So then once the guest is in, you can go and talk about the grandkids. You can deliver a glass of Prosecco. You can do what you've got to do, however you want to run things. But it's working I've, I've seamlessly heard, and enhancing I've, it if you're in the background. I heard the phrase recently about high tech being the new high touch, which is kind of counterintuitive. But then when you, you, you look at it like that, you can, I suppose you're, you're delivering that in person but not face to face communication automatically which then allows you to as you say knock on the door with a glass of prosecco yeah which presumably weighs the guests because they weren't expecting that kind no, of that's something or even a glass of english sparkling wine because we all know this we all know these corporate guests who come after a series of meetings during the day they want just the key the shower and a drink <laughs> quickly no small talk no nothing no interaction but even in our vineyard sort of uh, situation people arrive and Please know that they arrive, the check-in is from 3, the check-out next day is 11. So it's not 24 hours even, it's 20, 20 hours. And they need still to squeeze in a few good bottles of wine, a vineyard tour and a wine tasting session, dinner and whatnot. This is why we, it's really all about time, you know, and trying to squeeze all this and uh, take all these formalities away from the, from the whole uh, journey, as we used to call it.
Yeah, so they're, they're getting more of an experience than just an overnight stay, I guess, aren't they? And, and so going back to the sort of the extras and, and things, do you, when people book, do you sell in the, the, the tours and the, the bottles of, of course, wine? Of course, that's our job. Or, by, or, by the series of automated emails and, and reminders and, and clothes and, and vouchers and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So they can add it, uh, when it goes via AV, they can add it automatically yeah, to their booking. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Chris, I guess with a, a 2AA Rosette restaurant, that's a, a, a key part of your offering as well. So do you uh, tell people about, about the restaurant when, they, when they're booking automatically? Do we do what? Do you, how do you sort of upsell the restaurant? Do you include in emails that if they want to book yeah, the restaurant? Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the automate, as, as you said, the automated emails that go out are very... Uh, picture orientated so there's, there's there is text of course but there's a lot of images um and yeah people and, and links where people can just book like that and, yeah. and do most people that stay stay for dinner yes yeah i'd so say that. probably 85 90 percent something like okay. that yeah, yeah. nearly yeah. everyone yeah. and and with your audience are they you know, do, are they a group of people that want to come to reception as they yeah. see that part of that so, dinner, bed and breakfast experience in a way that people going to King's Cross, they want to get in, they yeah. want to get out because there's lots to, to see and do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we have a lot of people who, how do I put this? A lot of people who demand a lot of our staff time, <laughs> um, which is great. And, you know, as, just as you're all saying, it's all about the time. And if you can give the staff the time by cutting out their admin as much as possible, then, you, then the guests are happier to talk to them because this person isn't trying to do that and trying to do this and trying to yeah. do all these other things. So, uh, yeah, we, do, I mean, we have a lot of older people who come, particularly this time of year, and uh, they're le less tech savvy and they are less, um, they're more inclined to talk, which is great. Yeah. So, but they've got more time. They've okay. got more time. Which is, which is the, the <laughs> yeah. thing we're talking about. Yeah. And with that audience, when it comes to payments and checkout, do you send them links to, to pay their bills or do they come to the, the checkout still to do that? Because um, I know sort of just having a payment link sent to your phone is something I think is a, a, a great bit of automation where, you, you know, you don't have to go to the reception, just yeah, pay now. Yeah. I'm out of here. Do, yeah, so exactly. So we send out... Um, we just, first thing in the morning on checkout, well, first thing every morning, you go through how many people are checking out, just click, send payment link, bang, 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 bang. And uh, they, they get it in their email and then they can pay on that. And again, I'd say probably 70 or so percent do that and the rest have either already paid or would prefer to come down and tap a card or pay by cash. We still get people paying by cash. So do you, do you all take payment up front in advance for all bookings or do you yeah. take a deposit and then automatically take uh, the balance? We take but it all. We, we do both, yeah. But we, we have add-ons like restaurants, so... Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go okay. And it's important, it's important to add the line at the bottom that the deadline for complaints was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the, and the, and As we no, do. There's nobody at the reception, so don't bother, don't bother coming in. No uh, point. Uh, and I think you, you were saying to me that it means that when you're, you've got a busy breakfast service going on and demands there, you don't really want to be... It, it's, when people are checking in, there's maybe a bit more of a, a time at reception. But Unlike the these gentlemen, I come from a small hotel and I, I may be cooking breakfast myself on occasions because, you know, chefs are hard to find now and they fall like flies and stuff like this. So I may be cooking breakfast, uh, jumping out to check out somebody or talk to a guest and go back to the kitchen or serve breakfast. On different days, there's different scenarios. But we all need to accept it as a new, new reality. Yeah, yeah. And I think, Paul, you've even managed to automate breakfast. We used to, we used to do this. That was our experience of it quite often. We would cook breakfast. We made breakfast for about 13 years ourselves. And we'd be in the kitchen. People would want to check in, check out, you know, arrive, want to leave. But um, we've completely automated breakfast. We don't, we don't serve breakfast on, on the premises as such like we used to do as a bed and breakfast. Um, a trend that we started to see before COVID, people used to, we introduced flexible rates. People, especially younger people, started to want to book without breakfast. That was a trend that after COVID, 
we had a very sort of um, like a buffy style breakfast and a, and a quite a compact breakfast room that couldn't really be distanced. And so when we opened up after the first lockdown, we had to implement a way of still providing breakfast to our guests, but not actually providing it ourselves. And luckily we, we're in Brighton, so it's not like we're in a small village where we're forced to do our own breakfast. We've got five or six fantastic like little artisan cafes all around us <coughs> that, that people can go to within a minute walk. And one of those we partner with and um, we've managed to provide a breakfast in bed service to our guests. Brilliant. Which is, Brilliant. you can text your order from your bedroom, they'll send you a payment link and to pay for it and they'll bring it at a specified time to your bedroom door. So our partners at, at, at the cafe, they have the key code for our door so they can let themselves in their staff and um, the guests don't even have to leave the bedroom. They don't even have to get dressed. And they get a hot <laughs> breakfast brought to, their, brought to their door, which they've already paid for. And, yeah. and that is automated by us because it's promoted on our website. We send our um, automated emails before they, before they check in to inform them about breakfast. We text them an update. And, and there's also in the room, it's also um, clarified as well. But yeah, so now we've, we've saved three hours a day um, of being in the kitchen, we've saved the, the staff costs of having to um, waitress and waiter breakfast uh, serving times. We, we used to cost us so much money in food. We, you know, we've got a small kitchen area that we've now got rid of completely, turned into an office. But you know, we had a lot of food wastage. You know, we like we said, we'd have people wanting to check out while we're in there cooking breakfast. And also that thing about being a better host. When you're stuck in the kitchen, you know, you're leaving the face of your business to like quite often 17, 18 year old um, waiter or waitress staff to go and interact with your guests. Whereas where you're stuck cooking in the kitchen, you know, and that's and I, I, I all that's it, changed. It's, it, by automating that or taking that out, you, you're removing the, the unpredictability of it as well, aren't you? Because I guess you, you're, it, you've got however many guests in, you know they've all paid for breakfast, but yeah. then it gets to five to ten and they haven't yeah, turned up. And then, you know, and then, you've, you've and wasted then six the last... people come down or eight people come down or someone comes down at ten past ten, ten minutes after you've closed and they want breakfast and you're not really in a position to say no. Yeah. But when you come out for the checkout in a chef's attire with a big knife, they are, <laughs> they are not in position to dispute the charge. Slightly intimidated, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Patrick, I mean, I guess Rankings Cross, again, yeah. there's dozens of breakfast places. I, I love your idea. I, he, we talked about it before. We it's br it. brilliant. But I wanted to tell him he's not charging enough for it. <laughs> so he, he needs to double the price on that. No. Um, but I was looking for a solution as well because we yeah. got rid of breakfast ages ago. Yeah. You know, stank the place out, you couldn't get the work done, it was, I just didn't want it. Um, so I was looking for a better solution other than deliver Uber Eats and that, and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. But your service, do a little deal with a local cafe, yeah. like a butler service is what I really wanted in one of my properties. Yeah. So get someone dressed up, deliver it, charge 25 quid for it, why not? And it's there, and what it is, it's their specialism, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we specialise in a great bed, a great shower, a nice environment, a nice surroundings. They specialise in you know, breakfast, brunch, coffees, pastries, that's what they do. Yeah. And they do it better than we ever did it anyway. Yeah. yeah. And we, and, you know, so all our, ro all our rooms are now room only. And, um, but we never dropped our rates. To, okay. Even though we don't serve breakfast. Nasty. In fact, the rates have, you know, have, yeah. have gone up. But, and, and, so and it's, it, the margin's gone with it. Yeah, it You're on the national the, television now. So. <laughs> it, gives people, it gives people the choice that they want, though, doesn't it? Because they might be thinking, well, I've paid for my breakfast, but actually the place next door look well, really like, good. Pete, so. Quite often you don't want breakfast every morning. You don't, sometimes you want breakfast at half 11, you want a bit of brunch. You know, it, it, people, have, people arrive late in the evening and it, they can't make it up for, yeah. for certain breakfasts. But like we, was, we were chatting earlier on, if it's included in a price... Yeah, you're, have, near, you're going to damn it set your alarm and try and get down for it <laughs> aren't you yeah, yeah. So, we're all guilty of it yeah. everyone yeah that's exactly what I do and so you, Peter, you don't have any any staff cooking stuff but I think your, your sort of approach to staffing is kind of automate as much of the business and then allow the staff to be more like your concierge team Basically, sort of yeah yeah that's what we spoke about and that that for me is the way forward just deliver that customer service and that experience you need a good team you need your front of house guy 
to be very empathetic, almost stick up for the guests and all the time the guest to him is first. And then you can deal with the finances behind. But you need a good team, diverse team. That's the most important thing because ultimately happy, happy team, happy guests. Yeah. If you've not got a happy team, you've got no happy, chance. Happy guests, better reviews. Better reviews, better rates, better product, comes to work happy. Because it, uh, it's the service that's driving the reviews yeah. rather than all of the other things that people are going Yeah, you, you can set your own rates at, at that level and then you get what you deserve. Yeah, yeah. Just want to talk, um, so we, Avivo recently released a, a, an app that's fully integrated with, with the software and all the tools. How do you find using a, an app has, has given you more um, view on your business or sort of freed up some time and autom- you know, let, you, let you do more with your time? Chris, do you use it for sort of monitoring stuff? Using an app? Yeah, so the Avivo oh, app. The Avivo app, oh, right, yeah. Um, yeah, we use it for monitoring. We use it for housekeeping, so the housekeepers can go to the rooms and go, room done, and that pings up on the screen. What I, I was talking to you, um, what I'd really love to have is that to trigger an email to the guest so the housekeeper is in the room and presses room ready, mm. and that triggers an email that the guest gets. Oh, your room's ready three hours early or two hours early. Brilliant, I can come to the hotel now yeah um which I'm, and then they can buy lunch they and, can have and, lunch <laughs> yeah exactly instead of getting lunch in town or whatever um so i think that's the sort of thing how we use it but yeah i monitor what's going on and it beeps in my pocket when i get a new booking and that sort of stuff yeah. but, uh, and, and talking about talking about what we were speaking before about um saving time not doing breakfast and and rooms being ready early well that's obviously one uh, outcome of us not having to be there for three hours cooking and tidying up and cleaning and washing because if a guest leaves early yeah. we're on the premises we clean the room early the room's ready quite often our, our rooms can be ready from 9 30 in the morning so guests arriving early and we encourage guests to arrive as early as possible they get you know they can have the room from as soon as they arrive and that and before when we were doing breakfast we we wouldn't even get in any of the rooms until 10 30 even if the guests had left at 8 30 or 8 yeah. so it you know it's more time for the guests it's more time for them to be in the room they can arrive if they want to make a day of it in brighton they can arrive 10 o'clock chances are your room's probably going to be ready anyway yeah 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 it's a big win all around yeah. really and i suppose peter that that kind of ex- you were talking about you know they've got less than 24 hours to do the tour yeah. the brewery tour the taste well, there's, the a, shop, there's a flip but... side to it because when you do it these little favors are like early check and you don't charge for it then they will claim it again and again and again and everybody will claim it mm. so then the check-in hour comes out of the window there's no goes out of the window there is no stipulation anymore and i don't want to sound cynical but we are amongst professionals the longer they stay the more time they have to observe little things and perhaps to go home and you know these keyboard warriors at night <coughs> complaining. So you have to be careful with all this uh, opening up completely. I, as, as I said, I don't want to sound negative, uh, but early checking, I, I'm from the sort of old school and I'm not that keen on that. But uh, on, the other, on the other hand, the uh, uh, Evivo app allows you, you know, an instant peek into whatever is going on. <clears throat> and when you, especially when you run a small hotel and you're exposed to the, to the owners, the only question they have for you every day is, are we full up today? Are we full? Are we full? And that, that, of course, I say, even if I'm not, I'm saying I am full. And then I desperately <laughs> find a friend to book a room, you know, to, to be full. But the app is just another, another device, you know, another solution for these in real time operations. It's yeah. great. Yeah. And I think, Paul, you've said that people will, if they, if they want to book, they'll, they'll, they'll book online. But if they want to change something, then they'll phone up and then you can use it to check the Evo app? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Avivo app's there because it, it allows you to be anywhere, doesn't it? And you can, you, you know, you're walking down the street, you don't have to find somewhere that's got Wi-Fi, get your laptop out, have a quick look. Just like you're on your phone all the time. I can check any booking. I can check the amount of people who are arriving, what time they're arriving, if they want to alter the day of the booking, if they want to, yeah, upgrade to a different room. It's all there. The, the suite's on there. The, yeah. Yeah. It's very, very useful, and it? it's just an on-the-go tool, really. <clears throat> totally. Cool. To sort of finish up the discussion, or we'll get towards that. What? Where do you think 
the future for your businesses in, in automation and kind of what things would you like to get rid of? You know, you've got rid of your breakfast, you've got rid of some of the, the, the giving the keys out and stuff. Is there room to do more? Or, you know, are you waiting for the tech to catch up or are you waiting for the guests to catch up? Or, you know, what's, what's next? You, you, you've automated as much as you yeah. can. What, what, what would you yeah, do next? Yeah, so I think that's why I've sent some of my team here as well to see what else is out there, what we can implement. Um, I think the bring your own device thing is a massive thing. So you can just port your your Netflix and your Amazon Prime and all of that as a click of a button as opposed to, you know, logging in and logging out. You want to go to the hotel room, bosh, it's already there for you. You can watch TV when you want. Um, smart rooms in terms of, the, in terms of the, the heating, the lighting and all these things, fully controlled from, from, from central panel, but yeah. a, little, a little touchpad beside of the bed. That, that's small things like that. Yeah, yeah l- let's see what's out there uh, and see what can... It just has to enhance the guest experience and make life easier for your team. If, yeah. that, if it does those things, then we're all for it. Yeah, yeah. The question, the question is what are the limits of automation too? Yeah. But there must be some limits. First of all, I think, and I'm not speaking for myself, because it's not for me to say, but you can't automate the charm of a hotelier. You, know? you can't do it. Obviously. Not. There has to be a person <laughs> present, but comes without saying, of course. Maybe they the, could bottle that. The somehow. other thing, are the, a little, little hospitality treats like room allocation, for example, because you can't yeah. have too many room types because that would blur the picture on, on the website. But you know that, for example, a, a lone female guest, you can't uh, allocate the room far from the lift or in a distant block or something like that. Yeah. So there must be also a human uh, sort of input into that. Or, uh, the operation must be managed from the, from the, from the human level too. So we, we can't be made redundant hoteliers, even if the automation goes to the extremes. Yeah, yeah. So it's that kind of level of intellect, I suppose, isn't it? That, that With us, got... for example, some rooms of the same type have a, a little bit better view of the garden of the vineyard. And you need to remember which guests are most sensitive, who is most sensitive to the views and then allocate rooms appropriately. Yeah. But it, ha- it has to come from the, from the person, from, from myself yeah. in that yeah. situation. Yeah. And Chris, I think you've got a new venture with the cafe that you're trying to do. We, yeah, that's top secret. Oh, um, okay, we'll not <laughs> But we are just, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're just opening a new little cafe, yeah, and we're a beach cafe, and that's going to be the, the, eye, the whole premise of it is that it's very low staff. So um, it will be, you're sitting on, your, sitting on the beach, you probably it'd probably be done by a QR code onto your phone. You order your food, you pay for your food. It tells you when to pick it up. You go and it's there, and it's all paid for. And that's um, that's that. Uh, so that so that system is all. Don't forget the red button shark alert. The, what, what? Shark alert. Shark yeah. alert. Oh, shark alert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's uh, yeah, that's just coming. Yeah. But, and. Um, and- you, you're talking about the sort of the charm of the hotelier uh, and, and not replacing that. You've kind of managed a little bit of, of that with your um, chatbot. <laughs> yeah, so we've got a, we've got a chatbot, which um, we've only, we haven't had for a year, and I'd really recommend it. It's, it, and it's exactly what you were saying about time. Um, and, t- and time being the, the 40 years that, that yeah. when, when you fire it up, it says, although I've been dead for 40 years, my clever grandsons have digitally reanimated me as a, as a chatbot. Yeah, so my, both- my granddad is the chatbot who died in 1972, and there's a picture of him, and he says, I know everything about the Grove, just ask me anything. And he goes on about how his, um, in the glam site, how his uh, uh, cows used to be in that field and all this sort of stuff. Um, so it's quite good fun. But it, it's really good because it stops the phone ringing. Um, so if we'd get so many phone calls saying, you know, do you allow dogs in your restaurant, for example. It's, it's really obvious on the website if we do or not. But people don't read it all. But now the little bot is there and it's clearly not a person. And I think that's really important because it's not pretending to be yeah. a liar. Ah, okay. So it's clearly not real. Um, and, you know, do you allow dogs? No, we don't allow dogs in restaurant. The phone doesn't ring. The person who would be answering the phone is now speaking to the guests in front of them. Mm-hmm. So that, that, it's been a real, I'd say that's probably out of all our things we've automated, 
and it's still developing. It's not perfect, but it's still developing. But um, I'd say that's probably been one of the best because it's given so much time to our GT managers, our reception team, to spend with people in front of them instead of, oh, just wait a minute, I'm just, yeah. just on the phone. And you can still have your own personality in that. Yeah. Can't you? And you can yeah. set that up to, 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 to be sort of, yeah, be the, an the urbanite or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, yeah. Whatever. So good. Yeah. You know it's, what it's I'd good. say as well about automation and, and where it might go, and as long as it benefits the guests, and I can't imagine where it could go in the future because I'm sure it'll be anything that enhances their experience would be amazing. But what I don't want it to become is a, is a place where we're totally faceless. We're not an Airbnb. We're not just like a key drop where you turn up, you get a room, you leave, you don't see anybody. You know, that's not what we want. Because it is hospitality at the end of the day, and that is what's really important. And I think that um, whatever we can use to make our life easier and the guests experience better, that's great. But I don't want it. It, it can't take away from the fact that, you know, it is hospitality and coming to snooze in Brighton it's not like getting an Airbnb where there's a key in a box and you don't get to see anybody you know yeah. and there is a difference and I think that that'll always be uh, really important. Pete, Peter said to me when we were talking about that it was it, it, the hospitality business is hospitality and, and business, business. Uh, yeah. you know you, you can't have one you can't have one without the other um, Okay, um, we're nearly done with time. Might have a time for a quick question, but just wanted to quickly ask you: with all the time that you've saved, <laughs> what do you, what do you what, what would you do with all that free time? What do you do with that free time? This is a what very you owe up this to? is a very important <laughs> question because hoteliers need to have time off. It's always it's always a passion, you know, being in this business. But you need some some time off to pursue your own goals, you know, your family life, your I don't know, playing tennis, uh, photography, literature, music, or anything. Because you have something to talk with <laughs> guests about. If you don't have your private yeah. life, you, don't, you can't relate to your guests. So there's no, you don't know nothing about you know, politics or what's going on. And this is a bit futile and empty. So for the interactions, the human interaction, to have some, some kind of... Um, to be relevant. You have to have your own private life. You have to have your own worldview. This is why we need this time, you know. Yeah. I don't know about tennis and, <laughs> and golf and all that. I'll show you. I've got two, I've got two <laughs> teenagers and I run a taxi service for them, basically. <laughs> and I've got a dog and we've got a horse. And, you know, there ain't any time for golf or tennis um, or literature. But then again, my wife works really long hours and she calls me part-time Paul. So, oh, right. you know, so I must be doing something right. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah, it just depends what stage in your life you're in. You're in Jamaica. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> I take it as compliment. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm interested in, in buying more buildings and growth right now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, 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 Chris, what would, you, what would you do with your free time that automation gives you? Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, actually, and sorry, slightly free time, slightly not, but I'm normally on our kind of late shift on Thursday nights, and it's and it's normally Thursday nights, a couple of years ago, at the end of day admin would be an hour or whatever it was, where it's now a couple of minutes. So I'm normally having a drink with some of our guests and it's often <laughs> me sitting there nice. having a chat with them, yeah. probably yeah. giving away all the profits. <laughs> and yeah. and, uh, and it, it's lovely actually, but it's a lovely evening because it's often just one or two people. Um, I don't know, just having so fun. Having a lock in. Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, I think we've run out of time, really, then. But um, so it just remains me to say thanks very much for joining us now this afternoon. And thank you very much for my guests thank and you. sharing their thank experience with, with, with me and you. Um, we'll be over on the Avivo stand. If you've got any questions for, for us, Chris, Paul, Peter, Fatigue, come over and, and have a chat. We'll be, we'll be around. Um, and enjoy the rest of your, your, your day and um, good luck with your, your businesses for the coming season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.